Hey guys, it's Nancy <laughs> for all you Korean peeps. Okay, so this is a bit different. I'm gonna be talking about this Korean K pop boy group called Newest, Newest, Newest. I, I'll have their name up there showing, but the reason why I had to make this video is because. We have to talk about them for a second. <clears throat> Actually, we have to talk about them extensively because they are very important not only to I feel like the K-pop industry, but they're going to be very important for just the music industry in general, I feel like, in the future because they have a certain rise and fall type story that <laughs> people are into and uh, rightfully so because who doesn't like a good comeback legitimately not like these like comebacks like in k-pop that happens like every like three months or so like a legitimate comeback <clears throat> so i'm gonna assume that a lot of you guys are probably fans because i know the love the fandom name is very passionate um so hey i this is the first time i'm ever gonna like do this but i am officially a part of the love fandom originally i hate being a part of fandoms because i i kind of feel like my individuality is like taken away i'm like oh god i don't want to call myself like an ami or a bloody or what have you <laughs> and mad respect to bts and yoda tingu g friend um and all that stuff but and I just felt weird. I'm like, I can't, I can't call myself one of those. I don't know. It's weird. But this, I mean, it's a simple love and it does mean something like the hunger um, symbols in newest kind of look like the word love. So that's why it's, their fandom name is called love. And okay, so it's hard to even start this but I'm gonna start it like this I'm gonna put a link in the description of the a documentary um of newest uh that I just watched literally like 10 minutes ago and I've been planning to do a video of them for a while but I was kind of like scared because I'm like <sighs> I get really self-conscious very easily <laughs> and I'm like oh I don't know like maybe I'll just like won't do it and stuff I'll just keep doing my ASMR but I f after this after watching this documentary I'm like okay I have to say something I can't like not say something um and of course they are going to KCON New York um which is really in New Jersey but we won't talk about that <laughs> uh, which is near me i've went to kcon new york and i think it was 2015 i think man was it that long ago yeah um boy my first i went to 2015 and 16 but they're coming to they're coming this year in 2019 and um, and that just set me off i was like oh my god i get to see them in person so okay let me start like this i am not in like an og fan of newest I guess I'm relatively new. Definitely my first uh, time I have seen them or have heard of them was uh, when they came back with the song Overcome in 2016, February. Okay, um, or maybe it was January. I think it was February. But that song blew me away because, like, I... It had, like, R&B, like... It was an R&B song, but in Korean, really, which I really, really love because I love the genre R&B. It's probably my favorite genre. For example, BTS used to do that a lot. They, they, they still do, but like they really did it with like Girl Let Me Know or like like any of their, a lot of their old songs. Uh, Lost also kind of had a lot of that too. Um, Converse High. The Wellian 52, you know, those are my, my favorite BTS songs. But <clears throat> uh, not a lot of groups do R&B, like, and I'm not saying every group has to do it, but, like, it's, when they do it, it's fun. For example, for girl groups. Sistar, um, like, they had a lot of really, like, Hyolin, she has her own thing going on now where she kills her, he's killing her, 
Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm drifting. But you get the gist. Sistar with, like, a week, if you want, even I swear to a certain degree, like, be rocket R&B. So when I saw this group newest, I was like, okay, <laughs> first of all, who the fuck are they? I don't I have no idea who they are. I never heard them before. I assumed that they were probably like, uh, like an older group, like maybe from like generation, uh, the second generation. That's what I thought. I'm like, okay, I've never heard them. So maybe they're like an older group like tvsq i don't know um <laughs> uh but uh now i know that they debuted in 2006 no in 2012 which actually makes them a third generation group so i i didn't know um but i mean for so one yes that's what attracted me about them first the r&b style the vocals were very strong I didn't know who I didn't know any of the members. I was like, oh my god, I'm hearing a lot of great like singing. Like, what is going on here? Uh, I love that they went with the dark fantasy concept. I love dark fantasy in pretty much any medium. When I read books, when I watch movies, music. Apparently, like I love that. Um, and gosh groups do not do that <laughs> groups do stay away from fantasy usually with an exception of Vixa or Vix <laughs> um, with specifically fantasy go figure they have a song the fantasy that is uh, <laughs> that is, is what it is um, and oh my girl with closer so that I had to put all these in the links to, down below because all these songs are so freaking great. But no group really sticks to that style of like kind of smooth, like but like intense, epic, like pop R and B, hip hop feel, which makes me sad. Oh, <laughs> um, but uh, so I was like, okay, maybe this group is actually gonna like is this group is this the group like is this the group that's gonna do it like i was obsessed with that song so hardcore um but yeah so that's and, and we have to talk about it we have to talk about it we have to talk about <laughs> is it choi minky i think his first name is choi choi minky mingia aka ren the <laughs> Possibly the prettiest idol that has ever lived, but mm, okay, we won't talk about that right now. He's not my bias, by the way, but he is. He, he he's close, but he's not my bias. But he's amazing. So when I saw Ren in Overcome, he had the long black hair, and I was like, "Who the fuck is that?" I'm like, "Wait a minute, I." I'm living because I love the androgynous look on guys so much it, within reason like if sometimes it can be a little bit too much but I love the mix of femininity and masculinity uh when guys do it and I'm like oh my god dude I'm like wow this is very bold for a group to have an androgynous uh boy in this group dancing just like any other just like the rest of them you know but uh he um uh, but it's just, I'm just like, oh my god, dude. Like, that's really impressive. So, and the... the <laughs> and the, it was just, like, a hot video. It was, like, super, like, attract Like, it's just so manly and so attractive. And, like, the concept was, like, they're, like... And they're still ongoing with this concept. So, I will get into some of the other music videos. But the concept is, like, they're knights trying to, like, find their queen or save the the queen. Um, So, I'm like, yeah, they, they nailed that because I... I can believe that they are definitely knights. Okay. So that's what stood out to me. Ren, um, the song, and that's it. And the rap part was okay. It was, it, like, it was fine. <clears throat> this is me first, this is the first, uh, 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 yeah, impressions. It was fine, but I was like, okay. But the rest of the song, I, usually I'm not really into rap anyways. Like, I'm not into rap in general so like when when people when k-pop does it like it really they, they really have to sell it um for me to be into it so that's just i'm just a hard sell when it comes to rap but um yeah so yeah that was that 
And then, you know, I continued on with my life. I didn't really look at their other songs. Um, mind you, at this time, I was like, <laughs> I was focusing on you know, that Tingu. I was focusing on like Ken and K just came out. Uh, BTS was like hot at the moment, so I was into them. Not that much anymore, but I was into them during that time. Like 2000, 2016 was like the time for BTS. Like really, like I know like this is like their time right now, but like really, like they really like took off um like 2016 through uh 2017 so yeah um did I go to KCON 2016 I guess I did I forget I, I guess it was 2016 Jesus Christ anyway um <clears throat> so I I the only thing I looked up uh at newest was Ren that, that's the only person that I looked up um, and I didn't really find anything that interesting. I'm like, okay, like, yeah, I, I don't know. I just didn't really, nothing really, really grabs me to, like, um, research uh, the group anymore. I'm like, okay, I wonder if people, if there's any, like, compilations of, like, Ren um, being cute. And there were, but, like, it just didn't suit me. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I'm not really into, <laughs> I'm not really into, I'm, I don't know. It just didn't grab me. So, <clears throat> so, that was that. And there wasn't a lot of stuff about it. That also threw me off, too. I'm like, there's not a lot about this group in terms of like crack videos or like uh uh like <laughs> there's something you guys that don't know crack videos are like uh a mix of like moments of the groups going like crazy like just doing weird silly stuff uh so it wasn't i didn't see a lot of that stuff so yeah i didn't i just didn't look them up so fast forward um i forget when this came out but when love paint came out um, I liked the song. I was kind of excited. I was like, okay, news is back. I remember them. That didn't overcome. Okay, let's see what they, let's see. And at that point, a lot of people were kind of hyped for them. Um, so I was like, okay, like, not nah, you set the bar so high. Like, are you going to meet that? I was like, oh, no. So I, I liked the song, but the visuals for me didn't really impress me. Again, like, I really do miss that, like, dark, like, ominous, like, m like, haunting feel from, from, from Overcome. So when they did Love Paint, and it was very, like, kind of, like, poppy, more bubbly, more bright, I was like, oh, God, this is, like, too much for me. <laughs> I'm like, ah. And then Ren, he had this, like, pink hair, which was fine. The color was fine. But I just didn't like the style of his hair. It was, like, too short. Or maybe it was just, like, just weirdly cut I just didn't like it so I was like okay like the one I mean the song is fine the dance is okay I'm like I'm not really into the visuals right now and the song's not uh like making me feel like strongly as I did from Overcome so I was like okay like I guess I'm done with this group whatever <laughs> like it's I I'm done sorry um other I have other groups to fry fish to fry so um that was that that was it then fast forward um to uh where you at now where you at um it's kind of the more house beat dance song uh more club song feel uh, but still had that like R&B feel so did love paint too by the way but, um, well, yeah, I definitely had that too. Um, and again, like the environment, actually, I think it was on like the set of, uh, where BTS filmed Not Today, like that open, like desert place. Like, I don't know if it's an actual place or they just blue screened it, but <laughs> either way, they had the same like kind of atmosphere, very brightly lit, um, again, very poppy. Um, I think it was more of like, like... I think the concept was more like, like not sad, but it wasn't that happy song. It's called Where You At, cause like obviously it's a song about somebody like missing somebody or like wanting somebody. Uh, so yeah, but still it was like, still didn't do anything for me. I'm like, uh, the verse is fine. The verse is better than the chorus uh, for me, but still it just didn't really grab me. I'm like, oh, God, okay, like, okay, <laughs> I guess I have to move on. Um, but yeah, so that was that. Now, 
at this point, let's fast forward to 2017. Yeah, 2017. I'm like all in. I'm totally into Ken and K and Yota Tingu. At this point, I'm like losing my interest in BTS, especially after like the Wings a- album. <laughs> I actually wanted to go to like their Wings concert, but like I couldn't get it because I'm like I did not know how hard it was to get tickets to their concerts. So I was like, okay, that was a turn off. But like, okay, okay, fuck this shit. Like, I can't be so um, dedicated to like a band that like I'm losing my mind over <laughs> like getting a ticket. So I'm like, okay, like I'm just gonna stick to like my smaller, li- lesser known groups, my rookie groups, stuff like that. Just keep it simple. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just where I was. Um, and then I was, at that point, like, I was just not that much, like, I was into K-pop, but not as much as I was on the previous years. Uh, but I only got into it, like, 2014, so it's not like I was, like, I, I was never, like, really, I'm, like, a re- I-, I guess I'm, like, in one of those, like, middle, uh, slots. I'm not, like, a new, new K-pop fan. I'm not an old one. I'm, like, those people that came after seeing like the fine bros react to it you know <laughs> or the re- the reactions by the fine bros that's how i got into k-pop really um uh so and actually fun fact snsd snsd yeah girls generation was the group that actually got me into k-pop so if you want to know that but <clears throat> with i got a boy okay but <laughs> when newest came out with deja vu Okay, I believe it was 2017. If I don't, I think. <laughs> Wait, I don't want to get this one wrong. Or was it 2000? Shit. Right. Okay. It may <laughs> it may have been either 2017 or 2018. One of those. I have my computer right here. Let me look it up. So I don't want you guys to be mad at me. <laughs> um. But yeah, when that song came out, I was like, whoa. It honestly shocked the fuck out of me. I was like, wait a minute. This is very funky. It does have some hints of like R&B, but it is Latin pop. I'm not into Latin pop, but the way that they, they used it in the song was very like, um, like, uh, tasteful. Oh wait, I just I just typed in new and type in um, <sighs> Deja Vu. And I just love the way that it was like one of those like soft, like chill bops. Like I hate saying bops, but it was it was a bop, like but it was like a chill one. It wasn't like explosive, it wasn't like where you at. It was like something you can listen to like when you're like driving or when you're walking. I did do that by the way. Uh, I thought it was 2018. Shit. <laughs> Okay, never mind. <laughs> Feeling anything. Right. At this point, I had no idea that, like, Produce uh, 101 was happening. I didn't know that, like, w- like uh, Min Hyung was, like, gone. I didn't even know who Min Hyung was. Like, literally, like, I did not know any of their names but Randy, even them. I didn't even know because I wasn't into them. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was, I, 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 I didn't really, I noticed that, like, okay, it's only four people, that's interesting, but I didn't realize that it was such a big deal that somebody was not there, okay, I just knew that, oh, this is a song that I like, when the build-up to the song happened, you would think that it would be, like, an explosive song, but the use of silence in that song was, like, perfect, and it was, like, just the chorus was, like, perfect, it was, like, Jesus Christ, I can't, I can't even, I can't even, like, it was such a good song, I was, like, I've never heard a song like this in K-pop, there may have been a song like that in K-pop before, but I sure as hell never heard of it before. <laughs> so I was like, wow. And then, again, you, you're starting to see a pattern here. The visuals. It's dark. It's ominous. Mysterious. Masculine as fuck. And sexy. Sorry, it's the Masculine as fuck and sexy. Okay. So, totally that won me over completely. And the, what I noticed from, yes, I noticed the song, the use of silence, perfect, the visuals, the darkness, perfect. But the one moment that I was like, oh, this is, this is different. Something, something's here. The one moment that I realized something was up was in the chorus that, say you, 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 you,
and in the music video i noticed that like one of the guys he was like flipping his hair like deja deja vu and i was like that that shit was hot i was like whoa that shit is hot i'm like oh my god like <laughs> okay um i see a lot of passion i see a lot of charisma i see but i see a lot of coolness too like i i don't know like this that i kept replaying that part over and over again i was like oh my god who's doing that head flip <laughs> that hair flip i'm like whoa okay so i was like okay cool i kept watching that on youtube like on repeat or listening to it on repeat it's brilliant so um yeah and but still I did not look into the group. I did not try to learn their names. Because, again, like, it takes me a while to, like, get into a group. Like, it, once you, like, do, like, a couple of songs that I don't really care for, I don't, I'm not trying to, like, get into you like that. So, even though Overcome is still, to this day, it's a great song. I will still listen to it sometimes. But, like, you have to really, like, win me over with something, with, with some shit, okay? So, I was like, okay. This is the second song that I actually really, 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 really like, and that's actually very different, and it's my style. So I'm like, okay, so I'm not gonna look into the album, but I was like, okay, this is interesting, and that was it. That was it. I didn't look into anything else. I just re replayed the song, and then the moment passed, and that was it. Okay, now fast forward to 2019, where we are right now in. April slash March. No, I think it started definitely in April. All this shit started in April. In April, I am back into. I took like a little bit of break from uh, K pop, kind of, not really, but kind of, because I was like trying to be like all religious and stuff, and I was trying to like not be obsessive over k-pop but that didn't work so like i'm like not religious anymore and i'm like i'm like totally just like i i've had like my marilyn manson like i love him i discovered him corn i love rock i like i love that shit and i love k-pop too i have like a resurgence in my art and my music taste I love Evanescence, but I still love K-pop. I'm like, I cannot get over this fucking K-pop. Like, what the fuck is this? For instance, I know Ken and K has kind of, they're not on good terms right now because Eugene uh, had left. He was like a very strong vocal, uh, very strong uh, member that did the vocals. Um, so now I'm like, oh God, I'm like, that was like my one group boy group that I was like really rooting for I'm like oh jeez man I don't know what I'm gonna do luckily Yoda Tingu G friend is still going strong um in my opinion a little too strong like I, this is almost not even fair to like uh <laughs> to get into but I have to okay <sighs> Sunrise hey yeah Sunrise it's a great song great comeback liked it there's a few times that I did not like G friends come back necessarily sunny summer yes i did do a dance practice for it because it was a catchy song but ultimately it was, i didn't like that song i didn't like I me mean, time for the moon night was fine but i was like eh. but i was like okay let me see sunrise sunrise was good it was great loved it and it came out with their beat side their b-sides you are not alone great perfect loved it amazing until i realized that that was an old song I'm like okay this is an old song okay i feel a little bit like betrayed that you guys kept the song uh in your vault for like years but okay and then uh again you're not yeah and again with um love oh love same deal they record that apparently before they debuted or during the time they debuted it, or that was something that was supposed to be their title song after Glass Beat. And I was like, what? They kept this song in their vault? Listen, I know certain shit happens, but like, I'm like, what the f- Do you like, what? Like, okay, I love it, but I'm feeling a little bit like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And then La Pum Pum came out, the Japanese B-side. I'm gonna come around to newest again, trust me, just give me a second. La Pum Pum came out, and I was like, okay, this is the shit. This is shit. However, 
I'm getting, I'm getting kind of overwhelmed with all these songs that are coming out. And then Flower came out. They're like second, third, if you count Sunrise, Japanese version, but they're, okay, let's do that. They're third Japanese comeback or title track. And I'm like, okay, this is good too. I like it. But please, G Frank, can we like slow down? Like, can we like stop for like let a sister breathe? Like, it is good to like let me breathe for a second. I mean, <laughs> like that's one thing I cannot stand about the K-pop industry is that people move so fucking fast. And I know G Frank, they need to capitalize on their popularity as of like right now, especially in um in Japan. But I'm like. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I, yeah, I don't really care about like like us in America. It's like okay, like I know like you guys are promoting like Korea and, and Japan, but it's like boy, there's a lot of tension in Japan, isn't there? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I just felt I know it's so stupid, but like I'm just like, well, damn, like okay, like, I guess you guys don't need me anymore. Like, I guess you guys are doing quite okay, um, as of right now. So I'm like, okay, whatever, like. I still listen to their songs that they're I for me like their discography is impeccable. Their B sides are so good. I'll probably make a video about their B sides all on their own. But yeah, so here I am being like, okay, there's no one group that I really, really am championing for. Like I'm just like, okay, listen to K pop. If I find a good song, that's fine. Okay. So one day I'm on my phone, right? And I'm like, okay, my cracked phone. And I'm like, okay, watching some video. I don't even know what the fuck I was watching. Maybe, I guess it was K-pop. But I saw, um, how, was I, oh, you know what? I know how this happened. I was watching Overcome. <laughs> I was listening to Overcome again. And I was like, okay, I want to see this song. Like, this amazing song. Woo-hoo, dance to it, dance to it. And then on the side, I saw Help Me. I knew it. So I'm like, oh, they made a song, and I, the, um, the visuals. What time is it? The visual. <laughs> okay, I got enough time. <clears throat> the uh, yeah. uh, I'm losing my. I'm trying to like hurry up with because <laughs> I have actual ASMR to, to to do. But the visuals for the thumbnail was very dark. I like, couldn't even see anything. It's like very colorful, but like like the pink and the blue hues and the black. But it was like it's so dark. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I said, help me. I'm like, huh? Let me see what. The, let me just see. Let me just check it out. Maybe the song is okay. I don't know. Um, and then that's when the shit. That's when the fucking shit happens. <laughs> okay, so I saw that. What I noticed first was. The song is good. <laughs> the song is good. Ren's visuals are back in action with the vengeance. And now let me figure out who this fucking guy who's doing the chorus is and who's rapping. I find out that his name is JR slash Jung Young. Jung Young Ga. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, the vocal, the, who is this guy who's singing so strongly? Look him up. Okay, his name is Beko. I'm like, okay, now I know him. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I'm like, wait, what? The build up, the drop, the dance, and that freaking, that, that shoulder roll that JR does got me freaking sold. I'm like, okay, I am sold. Like, the, I know I said I'm not a big fan of, like, dance, like, music like that, like, club music, but the, for some reason, this song is different. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's just a different type of pop song. Definitely nothing new. Like, I'm sure, like, this, this sound definitely sounds familiar. I'm trying to see what it even reminds me of. Maybe it does sound like something that like BTS would do. BTS or like uh EXO. Kinda like reminds me of EXO, like uh Oh boy. Um Uh not over what's that song? It's not they're not the same song. 
but it gave me overdose. It, it gave me like overdose vibes, like how like that, like monster, monster vibes. In my heartbeat, yeah, like that's like that that kind of vibe. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like wait, like I like this a lot. And then Jr's chorus part, like his voice was like, whoa, this guy has such a attractive, deep, but like passionate voice. I'm like, who is this? So now, now I'm back in. Now the three you made three great title tracks now i have to know more about you now I, now i have to delve into you some more okay because there's something here um so yeah i learned their names i learned some of their background aaron we have to talk about aaron <laughs> he is um the dancer rapper and singer of the group uh he's the oldest and he's from America. He's from LA. He was born in LA, but he's Korean American, right? And Aaron is very important to this mix because Aaron, at first, he kind of like threw me off. I didn't really care for him because he looks so like awkward on stage. When I see, like, when I saw the live performances, it looks like he's like trying too hard to like focus. And I'm like, relax, dude. Like relax. Like it's okay. Y'all look so serious. Um, but when I looked into like some more of their like variety shows and interviews, I realized that. Aaron was very like silly and goofy and just super fun and when I saw him um or I heard him speaking in English I'm like holy shit like he, he's definitely from America because he has the accent the LA accent down I'm like shit dude that's really impressive not impressive but it's, it's like oh crap like a k-pop group that has a having a, an English uh, or an English speaker that's like fluent from America I'm like huh Usually, like, they, they, they tend to make fun of, <laughs> at least what I can see. They tend to really, like, make, like, the uh, the American, like, uh, uh, not ostracize them, but definitely make them feel, like, out of place or, like, not completely Korean. Like, oh, you're not completely Korean, so, like, you, you know, whatever. Like, you can take you can take a joke or something, or you can, like, you know, we'll make fun of you a little bit for that. I don't know. I feel like that's what happens. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. But, um, but for Aaron, I'm like, huh, they actually, this, this is very interesting. I feel like I'm like, like, they, they, again, like having that connection, like that American connection does help. I mean, like it does. I I don't prefer like, oh, I need like an English speaker in the group. Like I never, like that never stopped me from actually probably the opposite for, not the opposite, but what like, what I like about Yota Tingu is that like, they don't pander to like, the English, uh, uh, English actually, most of their title tracks they have just, just Korean or just Japanese. Not a lot of like English in like their choruses, um, which I really do appreciate because like seems more authentic. Um, but I don't know for some reason like Aaron is just very, uh, I, it's very relatable. I'll say it like that he's very relatable. He seems like a very relatable, relatable personality. Okay, and then I was like, okay, that's interesting. Beko. Beko is definitely the main vocalist of the group. He has one of the strongest vocals I've ever heard in K-pop ever. Like, ever. Like, he definitely rivals Yuju from G-Friend. Jet, like, like any, just any, he is there. Such such strong vocals. Eugene from Ken and K. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I know Jimin from BTS is he's strong vocals as well, but I think he's better than Jimin <laughs> uh, or Jungkook or V or and like, yeah. Maybe Do Do from from EXO is pretty fucking good too. And and uh, his name Baekhyun, Baekhyun. Yeah, he's pretty fucking good too, but. Echo is something one of a kind. And we have to talk about this. Talk about his sweating. We have to talk about how he is he, he sweats a lot. And it's so attractive. And I know you're not supposed to sweat a lot, like if you're like you put on stage and you're an idol and stuff. But for some reason, like he he has that like 
I know his nickname is Sexy Bandit from Produce 101, but, like, he sells it. Like, you can believe, yeah, this guy is super manly, and the sweating definitely, uh, <laughs> it definitely works on him. <laughs> so you're like, oh, yeah, I'm here for it. And you have great vocals, too, and you have abs. Like, you have the fucking body. I can't get into that right now, but we will get into it later, how he has such a great fucking body, dude. And he likes to eat. So that's also cute, too, and, uh, guys that eat a lot I don't know this is this is cute it's like oh you like to eat a lot look you're taking care of yourself I like that okay um <clears throat> you're enjoying yourself okay so <clears throat> J.R. he is my bias Jung is sorry I thought I heard something <laughs> Jung Hyung is my bias he has such charisma as you as I've said before, I've noticed him in Deja Vu, not that much in Overcome, because I didn't really care for the rapping part. But Deja Vu, hair flip, uh, help me, the shoulder roll. And when I, I didn't even, I never saw this before, but when I saw the Overcome dance practice, like literally like a week ago, <laughs> his, his part, when he does that like intro, like, like that part was so tight and so like like intense i'm like he's such a great dancer like he knows how to move so i'm like okay now <laughs> i love dancers i tend to gravitate toward the dancers in the group like shinbi from a uh, um from G friend like i you can just tell like she is the she's the main dancer or the lead dancer or whatever you however you want to say it She's the dancer. You can tell that Jung Hyun is the dancer. It's great. And I'm like, oh god, he raps and his voice is so passionate and so like masculine, but also kind of like feminine too. It's very interesting. And we see him on variety shows. He is so adorable. And his smile is like the brightest smile in the world. It is the cutest freaking thing ever. I'm just like, oh my god, dude. Yep. He and and there's a couple other things that attract me attract me to him for instance in this article here this i'll link it i'll link it in below i'll link it in below i'll link it in the description below but the article newest w discusses their artistry career resurgence and ending ending 2018 on a high note jr says something that's very interesting um in response to do, 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 do. In response to somebody saying, um, <laughs> okay, um, this question right here, and I'll end with this. I know I have to talk about Ren too. Ren's visuals are amazing. His vocals are great. I, I can't, like, he's great, but Jung Hyun's my bias, so I have to talk about him some more. <clears throat> this question says, if you had to speak to the version of yourself from two years ago, what would you say? And then Ren says, I tell myself to stay strong and not lose hope. Beko says, you're doing well. Keep it up. JR, JR says, because of that past, that's what made us who we are now. So, <laughs> like, that's it. I'm like, oh, my God. That is it. He, you can tell he, he's wise. You can tell he's smart. And, I'm, like, I'm like, what? Like, that is such, like, not the response. And then Aaron says, uh, just continue to work hard. Don't give up the results will follow so that's amazing too but yeah i'm like wow like he he knows he's like my past made me who i am now like even though it was incredibly hard it is what it is i'm just like dude so yeah i just i just love his passion i love i just love him i'm here for it i love all of them really ren is so adorable you can tell that ren cares a lot about the members and everything he's so thoughtful and he's such a beautiful soul too you can just tell but yeah all of them mm. great so i will talk about this in my main channel some more i won't talk only on like my asmr channel but yeah i, I just had to say that to you guys i just had to i'm about to run out of memory on my camcorder but yeah guys thank you so much for watching come to me and can't wait to talk more about people and just things that I like. Okay, guys. Bye.